And today's session is a product of uh, continuous previous three sessions we had with the board of directors and the parent committee. Uh, we had few sessions we, uh, just because we are at the age of uh, reopening the school physically with the blended uh, program. So we discuss a uh, lot of issues regarding COVID and uh, current status in Oman and how to how we are going to start the school. So uh, we had valuable input as a uh, chairman correctly said from various doctors, and uh, we thought of forming a panel of doctors uh, to formulate these guidelines. I mean the overseeing and supervising the guidelines. Already guidelines guidelines has been prepared. Uh, by the board and the uh, parent committee. Uh, so, meantime, we thought we should educate our uh, parents and the teaching staff regarding the COVID and how we are going to deal with the uh, uh, current uh, situation. So, today's agenda, we will uh, I'll briefly go through agenda. Uh, first, first of all, before going to the COVID, we thought of giving you some input regarding online teaching the effects of online teaching on our children. So first, uh, Dr. Shyam Farooq is a specialist uh, uh, psychiatrist uh, from Sri Lanka, and uh, he, he will uh, brief about uh, psychosocial implications of your child on online teaching, especially the psychological development and uh, bad effects. And next uh, speaker will be uh, Dr. Imitiaz, who is a specialist eye surgeon in our hospital. Uh, he will talk about the eye effects especially the uh, how the vision is affected during this uh, continuous online teaching uh, then followed by uh, the next topic uh, was given to dr wasihara and actually he had prepared and he had uh, gave me a lot of inputs unfortunately unfortunately he is unable to attend the meeting today because of his on call commitments i i must thank on uh, dr wasihara and some other uh, physicians in our hospital and the MOH oh, doctors you. like Dr. Prabhat and Dr. Zaina. So we will talk about actually, I will brief you about the current COVID uh, status in Oman. Uh, very brief presentation. Then, uh, uh, then Dr. Uh, Pyrus will present about the prevalence of COVID that, that's very important in pediatric population and how our children are going to affect that one. Uh, then we will talk about, uh, about the mix Actually, I personally had uh, the, will give that uh, presentation, the co common myths about COVID infection and uh, how to prevent this. Uh, finally, if you have time, we'll go through our gu guidelines that we have formulated. And finally, we'll give you a chance to ask questions. So first, uh, if uh, I would like to invite Dr. Shyam Faru uh, to give the presenta presentation about on our children. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Madam, and then uh, the members of the academic staff, and my dear parents, uh, a very good evening to all of you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I uh, It is indeed a great pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm honored to do this presentation, uh, and uh, which is a uh, uh, very important, you know, in present context. And uh, at the outset, I must tell all of you uh, that I'm going to rush through because uh, we have limited time. And uh, please uh, forgive me or, you know, bear with me if, I, if it is too fast. But then uh, later, if you need anything or if you need any clarity, you know, any to clear any doubts, please uh, feel free. Uh, once the session is over or during the session. So we'll try as much as possible uh, to do this. And then I hope that I will not bombard with uh, so much of information. Uh, but anyway, so please uh, understand the real situation. First of all, I would like to thank our chairman, Mr. Priyanka, and then uh, Madam Principal. Uh, so I, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here. Anyway, so after uh you know having said that i think uh the other issue is uh now will uh my the, the topic that is uh, given to me is uh, uh is on psychosocial implications of online learning so uh 
before that i would like to uh, uh, you know give an introduction about uh, what we call uh, uh, psychology so how can you and uh, please can you mute your mic so please all of you so that there won't be any interruptions please right thank you very much right now uh, let us start with uh, let's, let's begin with psychology uh, so uh, what do you mean by psychology so i don't want to elaborate so much but just i will go through uh, so it is uh, basically you know what psychology is so it is a scientific study of mental process and behavior so what do you mean by mental process is uh, you know it's exactly uh, it's a process it's not only mind but then i'm talking about uh, the process so here uh, there are many components we say we starting with attention and then focus perception through senses and then thinking comprehension decision making and problem solving apart from that uh, imagination and uh, belief also comes as a mind we, we just uh, say that but in uh, psychology there's a, an important aspect of mind we call cognition so that is a thinking part right and then uh, also emotions uh, you all know about emotions basically these are feelings and uh, behavior so uh, so scientific study of all these uh, all three components uh, these three parts are known as psychology right so uh, here these are the relevant branches of psychology which i'm going to elaborate on um, i'll just go through uh, you know superficially uh, one is educational psychology the first one and then developmental abnormal and uh, health psychology uh, finally uh, the positive psychology uh, well uh, as far as I, educational psychology is concerned now uh, we don't uh, we know now in uh, in uh, you know usually uh, learning is known as a, a process which results in relative permanent change in behavior this is what uh, the real definition is psychology right but then uh, uh, i think uh, there's some difference as far as uh, you know the uh, school system is concerned but uh, having said that the basics are i think almost same so uh, when you talk about this uh, educational psychology part, so you all know because I just want to link, uh, you know, the uh, link, the relevance or link between educational psychology and uh, to see the uh, link between uh, educational psychology and also the system online and uh, its effectiveness. So uh, when we talk about this uh, process itself, you know, you can see that retention, or in other words, uh, memory, uh, depends uh, only 10% uh, on reading. I mean, 10% uh, on reading and hearing to 20%, we say. Uh, seeing is 30. I'm sorry, that uh, part is missing. And then seeing and hearing, by seeing and see hearing, it is 50%. By discussion, you will retain 70% of the components, mind you. This is very important. And then also, finally, seeing hearing doing so all three uh, will make it 80 percent so uh, basically you know learning process uh, it's not simple uh, seeing and hearing and this is also live what i mean is live this is not online so uh, mind you uh, uh, parents to know and also to teachers to know uh, this part the process of learning which will uh, which in turn will uh, result in uh, the highest productivity as far as uh, the learning process is concerned right and then uh, the other important part you know while considering learning process it must be stimulating and must result in abil in the ability to perform and uh, definitely it is affected by emotion it's affected by the physical and social environment and uh, you see this uh, the, uh, this part whether it is stimulating on online is uh, controversial, it can be, but then is it as uh, good as uh, uh, while you're doing it uh, direct? And also uh, it is affected by emotions and the social environment, physical and social environment. So will uh, 
we'll see that i mean uh, in the coming slides so these are very important uh, in order to uh, you know understand the real settings where uh, it will be very uh, you know conducive for for the process of learning right so uh, so this is a, what you call effective communication skills so this is a, we talk about this effective communication skills there are uh, so what do you mean by communication is by way actually uh, you know it is a sending and receiving messages between two or you know more individuals right uh, but you know it's not only sending messages but also receiving messages so um, uh this is a uh, very important in on, on online it is only saying yeah so what happens now uh, uh does by way uh communication occurs here uh, online it's uh, you all know it is yes but it's not as good as what you are doing in the classroom so uh and then uh, the other important part as far uh, as effective communication skills are concerned, I think most of the teachers and uh, some parents do know about it. Uh, we say uh, uh, non-verbal messages, right? Verbal spoken words, you know, carries only seventy percent value. So, in in the uh, you know, in, uh, as far as effectiveness is, is concerned, or in other words, persuasion or persuasive skills or success of communication we say if you see the components right only seven percent of the spoken words matter uh, but the other parts is non-verbal uh, and then uh, we call non-verbal messages and uh, sorry this is a non-verbal messages of two types one is a tone of the voice the other one is bo uh, body languages right so uh, body languages carries uh, 55 percent of the you know uh, the persuasive skills and also the tone that is another uh, 38 so this is the reason why you know when you are doing a program so the the audience will uh, say depending on the the person or the presenters uh, uh, the body languages and the with, with the tone uh, that depends uh, mostly the success of the program and the pe penetration or persuasion depends mainly on the non-verbal message so this same rule applies uh, to the students right um, so this is also we have to keep it uh, keep in mind so when we are talking about online versus classroom management right so here uh, we uh, i forgot to mention about one thing why co-curricular activities shouldn't be co-curricular activities rather uh, should be called as a co-curricular activities but those are not extracurricular so this is another important aspect of school education. I mean, classroom and then the school environment, where uh, these uh, extra those days those days those are known as extracurricular activities like uh, sports, uh, debates, right? And then um, you see the social interaction, drama competition, and then so on. You all know, but these are complementary. They are not extra because it has a a component of motivation and it's you know the ch our children need some balance they need the, that uh, you will come to know about it like physical needs as well as uh, social needs so uh, it will be provided only by these things and which in turn will complement uh, their existing level of motivation which in turn uh, will increase their perception i mean and uh, their their, their motivation towards learning process. So this is what you call uh, uh, you know, co-curricular activities. If I'm uh, if there are any mistakes, uh, please do correct me. I, I think this is what I what I learned. So um, right, coming back to this, I think uh, this is also imp it's important uh, mentioning about this part. We call uh, bottom-up mental process and top-down mental process, intuitive mind and the rational mind. Uh, people may think it is only the rational mind, this is which matters a lot, but uh, intuitive mind is also important. You know, for example, a teacher who is in the classroom will definitely come to know about subtle uh, body cues, about uh, where the children uh, understand 
uh, the subject well or are they are lagging behind or uh, uh, you know does she or he has to change the tone or the way that she teaches uh, the feedback uh, it is not only verbal feedback but then uh, there are subtle uh, differences in their body language and then also the teachers part and uh, so that uh, it's a by the uh, sort of uh, you know relationship so uh, in a physical class everything happens i mean uh, without our knowledge whereas in the online uh, you know the uh, also it doesn't happen right so that is one of the reason why uh, teachers do not know whether uh, students are learning and uh, students sometimes get uh, frustrated right as uh, the stimulation is very less and then uh, there's no way of uh, changing the tone or you know uh, you know uh, altering the way of the description or whatever so this is also we'll have to understand this part of psychology right so this is uh, i think this is briefly about uh, what you call educational psychology as far as uh, but i know of but uh, there may be more but then uh, this is very relevant uh, you know if, uh, if we we have to decide about online or physical class right the second part important aspect uh, is developmental psychology so you see this is uh, our children uh, you know there are two important part important, important stages i don't want to go through right from the beginning but then this is uh, the i'm sorry this is a uh, year 6 to year 12 not year 6 age 6 to year 2 uh, age 12 that is uh, grade 1 to um, grade 7 or grade 6 uh, this is a uh, uh, an important part we call industrious versus inferiority right so according to uh, this famous psychologist who describes about this stage uh, where children uh, you know have uh, we say we coin a term called multiple intelligences so where if they are kindled according to their inborn talents talents and also uh, if they stimulate you know uh, or give the environment a stimulating environment then they will be more industrious so the schools provides with uh, more complex what you call uh, uh, skills development and also they do evaluation evaluation in the sense not only exam but every day the teachers evaluation their comments mainly uh, you know their appreciation right and then also um, uh, so criti- uh, we call uh, constructive criticism if and when necessary so uh, they become very industrious and then if you identify the catch, catch them being good we say and then uh, you see their competency increasing uh, on the other hand Now, if they don't have that uh, environment they will feel inferior so this is an important part so when they in the school if teachers know about them they know the differences diversity and they know that uh, should be personalized but when you are doing online i don't think you can do that uh, properly so that is uh, something which we will have to consider uh, the second part uh second age is very important we call uh, 12 years to 19 this is a uh, teenagers we call identity versus role confusion so uh, this part uh you know this is a uh, where this age girls and boys uh they say about uh, their identity how they fit in i mean as intellectually and socially with the peers and then we say dependence and independence stage so uh, ideally they must be given uh, the environment the peer uh, interaction is very important for their uh, for them so when they are stuck inside home without coming out for a long period so that creates more role, role confusion right so that uh, results in more conflicts between parents and uh, their teenage uh, children right uh so in a dramatic some sometimes it, it becomes uh, out of control so the conflict escalates and can lead to both uh, what you call uh, outward aggression and inward aggression so where you see in the form of uh, violence or suicide right or deliberate self uh, self harm so i see lot of uh, children over here some parents call me 
and they asked me uh, why the reason during the covid pandemic so children are stuck inside and uh, they misbehave and they are very violent they are irritable their iq you know it's not intellectual quotient but irritability quotient goes up so what is the reason main reason is their identity and the need uh, social need is not met with right so they get into confusion so as a result uh, so you get into problems so this is uh, what uh, we had to consider okay i this all right so uh, this is a uh, maslow's hierarchy of needs we call uh, it is an important part right so uh, the parents uh, and teachers i think uh, we are stuck here only on safety needs physiological needs right if you really see uh, the third and fourth part of part of uh, what you call hierarchy of needs right these are not wants so mind you these are needs right so you see uh, physiological and safety needs are very important there's no doubt that is the reason why it was initially justified right i mean uh, you will have to save our children and ourselves from uh, deaths right and covid related deaths but then uh, you see the time has come that we know about it now uh, so we we'll, we are going to live with it so uh, now the important part for children the third and fourth is psychosocial needs that is love and belongingness right friendship intimacy right sense of connection so if you don't give that environment they are going to get into uh, problems and then also self esteem right uh, so that status recognition strength and freedom so you see these two things are very important as far as the children are concerned so uh, that also i think should be considered right finally i think uh, since we are running out of time uh, so abnormal part i'll just uh, go through briefly uh this is uh, the sri lankan survey findings right before i came to oman it was in 2016 mind you before the onset of uh, covid we didn't know anything about this kind of situation so as it as it was you know the it was alarming actually you know 9% of the children have said that they felt lonely and 5% of the school children teenagers felt uh, uh, the anxiety symptoms right and 6% of them had no uh, friends and uh, likewise uh, you see uh, these children uh, they were they did a survey on uh, suicidal feelings ideations and attempts this is uh, alarming we know only the tip of the iceberg so the one of the reasons for suicidal feelings and uh, suicidal ideation and frustration and prior to that many of them uh, end up in getting what you call adolescent depression is the uh, you know you see these uh, most of them in the urban setting you see 20 1% of them uh, feel that it is not worth living so that means it's very poor mental health so you can imagine now how it would be right so uh, we have to be very careful about that right so finally right is this uh, your child someone known to you uh, how do you explain this behavior right think is it a habit or is it an addiction xbox generation i'll just go through it right uh, book form uh, forms are better now our children they say sometimes when we read books you know so they laugh at us now right? those days we read uh, we used to read a lot but then now the generation gap is there right uh, so uh, what can we say about during this period right uh, so you just see this uh, thing i don't i i just want all of you to focus on this you know if your children or yourself right have these criteria right then uh, be careful this is not uh, something trivial right 
Uh, first thing is preoccupied with internet use, need to use with increased amount of time, right? And then uh, unsuccessful attempts to control or cut down or stop. Right? And then you see uh, attempting to cut down has caused psychological disturbances. You see this uh, loss of significant relationship, right? Job educational or career opportunities. And uh, lying to conceal the extent of involvement, right? You see your children, you look at them, whether they're always uh, in front of the computer, right? Uh, apart from their online schooling, and then also about uh, the time, whether earlier they used to spend only a few minutes, but later, they're spending so much, right? And then uh, attempting to cut down. So they do they become irritable when you say them, uh, when you tell them about the limit, right? Uh, and also they themselves try to control, but they are unable to do it, right? So they conceal and they try to, you know, escape uh, boredom. So these are the things which we will have to consider whether they're addicted or not. So why it is uh, you know so important during these days you know uh this is i will not go through in details but then uh, there is a class which we call diagnosis in uh, psychiatry but also also uh, we have to be very careful because it has not come formally but uh, informally yes there's a diagnosis called internet addiction right so you see uh, everything is changing now okay. Right. There it is. Now, what about the benefits and risks? Right. Uh, definitely, I mean, I'm not trying to minimize or trivialize the importance of uh, use of what you call online teaching when in the absence of what you call uh, the classroom uh, and then the uh, high uh, epidemic uh, situation. But having said that, uh, can we go on for a long time? And uh, can't we have rendered the education? So some people are fixed uh, in the idea of the, doing only online, uh, considering the risk. But then uh, what about the psychological impact? So when you give them the computer, right, for online, but do we really screen them for doing only that part? How is it that easy, right? So these are the risks that you you can you know you, you can experience from this uh, you know uh, uh, this of uh, this computer uh, addiction, what you call internet addiction. So uh, so be careful about cyber sex, uh, pornography, repetition, sexting, and then cyber bullying. And also you get these uh, sleep issues, sleep problems with children, right? And then it is very clear beyond any doubts, right? Those children who are addicted and even teenagers, adults, right? They lack social skills. You know, they say simply social uh, media, social media makes people asocial, right? So um, I don't have time to, you know, elaborate on that. But then uh, finally, uh, or two more, two more slides. So about the, uh, ACE model, we call uh, personality versus psychology, right? So you see uh, what happens now, what happened to our children nowadays? It's easy access to internet now. There's no restriction to use, right? There's uh, excitement and then uh, they become very distractible now. So I can see my children while uh, learning, you know, online learning. So in between they chat and then in between they go through this YouTube, right? So unless and until we supervise them, they become very distractible, right? And then uh, you see more than the teaching part, uh, they get uh, onto that the other part, right? And sometimes it can go out of hand and they become addicted to those uh, kind of violence, games and uh, uh, other issues. Bursting is uh, pornography and uh, also, uh, so many other materials right you see uh school and society you know if they go on like this there will be poor connectedness to school and uh, then uh, there's a diagnosis we call school resistance now if we keep on doing this without blended education 
So many children will become very resistant to school environment, right? And uh, it will be very difficult to rehabilitate them. Right. And, uh, right. Cognitive factors, we see these children uh, who are all, who, 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 who are what you call uh, uh, screen addicts, right? They have uh, impaired executive control ability. We call it poor, poor impulse control, right? And they have a narcissism. We call narcissistic personality, right? It's like self-inflated uh, self-esteem and then uh, high novelty-seeking characteristics, right? And uh, they have poor uh, what you call self-control. That is, in other terms, we call poor impulse control, right? And uh, you see, they, they are more distractible. The attention span goes down. Their focus is uh, very much impaired. So they become restless. And then also you see uh, when children are occupied with this, they can become what you call a condition we call a Asperger's. So this is a, another aspect we should be very mindful, right? Right. So finally, what can you do about it? Right. Right. Skipping school, fatigue, lack of concentration, this is at school. And then, uh, how do we treat? Right. This is uh, the important part. I'm not talking about medical treatment. You know, there are some drugs, if they are very, those are very severe. Uh, there are psychological way of rehabilitation. And then uh, you see uh, first acceptance and then awareness, right? Awareness and acceptance is very important, right? And then uh, get everyone involved, family, extended family, school, friends, and community, right? And then, uh, right. Recommendations for children, right? Uh, game time, right? This is, a, this is an important slide which I really want all of you to concentrate, right? This is an important slide which I want to share, right? Uh, this is the, these are the recommendations now from zero to two years, uh, no screen time, right? Uh, from three to five years, uh, one hour is okay, and but six to 12 years, it is two, two hours. Right from 13 to 18 years, only two hours. And uh, again, you see uh, uh, what type of programs, you know, you see uh, uh, parents uh, have the responsibility to supervise. And then, uh, mind you, these nonviolent video games and violent games, video games should be permitted only for 13 to 18 years, for 30, you know, only for 30 minutes per day, right? Uh, not more than that. And then also, you know, it should be with responsibilities. Once they have done their responsibilities, like uh, homework, doing other work only, they should be given this time, right? Uh, if it is beyond that, you should set limits. Setting limit and consistency are very important part of parenting. Otherwise, children are going to get into problems now. We do get many. So this is uh, the last important part we had to mention. So family planning, and then uh, finally, we say uh, uh, family media plan is very important. So uh, I hope that we all will uh, follow these instructions and make uh, in our children future uh, a bright one. Right? Uh, so uh, dear parents and uh, members of the academic staff, I'm sorry I had to rush through, but these all these topics should be discussed in at length. Uh, we'll see, inshallah, if we find some time, we'll uh, talk about it one by one uh, on another. Thank you very much. For then, uh, sorry for taking a long time. Right, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, Board of Directors, Dear colleagues, Madam Principal, dear teachers, uh, dear children, good evening to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Chairman Priyanka and the Board of Director, Madam Principal, to giving me this opportunity to give a talk on this forum. Uh, and today I am.
I'm going to talk about, I am Dr. Intias, ophthalmologist. Today I'm going to talk about the physical effect of uh, digital screen. Already my colleagues, Dr. Shyam, speak about uh, thoroughly uh, mental effect of the digital screen. Yeah. My topic today, computer vision syndrome or digital eye strain in children. Uh, what is computer vision syndrome or digital eye in a group of eye uh, vision related problem that result from prolonged digital screen use such as computer, tablet, e-reading, PlayStation and cell phone. Uh, it doesn't cause permanent vision damage, but it can produce unwanted symptoms. Children who have existing eye problem can be more symptomatic. What are the symptoms? Uh, blurry or double vision, dry and itchy eyes, red and burning eyes, eye twitching, headache, neck and shoulder pain, back pain. Uh, what are the causes? Viewing digital screen for extended period uh, without sufficient screen break. Uh, digital screen causes children's eyes to work harder than normal. Uh, these are the reasons the screen content being less sharp or focused, uh, poor contrast of the content against its background, reflection or glare on the screen, poor lighting, proper viewing distance and angles, poor seating posture, uncorrected vision problem, and other eye problem, especially ocular surface disease. A combination of these factors can give symptoms of computer vision syndrome. How do we prevent? Uh, the best way to prevent computer vision syndrome is to avoid long and uninterrupted period of screen use. However, this is not possible for many children due to uh, COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and uh, online school, which has increased uh, digital screen users and uh, digitalized strain. A solution for this, uh, starting normal or conventional school uh, go for the blended school is one of the solution. Today, I am going to give you some uh, preventional advice for children who cannot uh, unavoid, unavoid these situations, these are the tips. Uh, rest and break. Uh, resting the eyes for 10 minutes after every hours of continuous computer use. Uh, this is There is no hard and fast rule. Some literature say every uh, two hours uh, take the 15 minutes break. An American Association of uh, Optometry uh, recommended following 2020 rules when working at the computer. What's that mean? The every 20 minutes digital screen use, take a break for 20 seconds and look at uh, look at an object 20 feet. Uh, you know our children, when they glue to the screen, uh, they will not follow these any rules. So as a parents, we should guide them and uh, at least for a two hours, take a 15 minutes break or one hour, 10 minutes break or follow these 2020 rules. All the children, there are some software that can remind them uh, every 20 minutes, take a two. And there is another rule, one, two, 10 rules. Uh, this is the distance uh, which you should use the screen. The one foot away the cell phone and two feet away laptop and the desktop and uh, 10 feet away the TV. Uh, parents should uh, take care of this distance when they do use digital screen like PlayStation and the mobile and the desktop and laptop. The position of the computer screen, the computer screen should be 10 to 50 degree below the eye level as measured from the center of the screen. Uh, you can see here in this picture, uh, this is your eye level and the center of the screen should be there is 20 degree. Uh, research has found that when you read looking down, you are more comfortable uh, and your uh, exposure to the light is less when you look down and read. Other thing is distance. I already discussed uh, roughly two arm length average screen. And uh, computer ergonomics chair should be comfortably padded and con conform to the body. Chair height should be adjusted so the feet rest that on the floor. Arms should be adjusted, provide support while typing, and wrists shouldn't rest on the keyboard when typing. In this picture, explain everything. And lighting of the room, ensuring that there is adequate lighting in the room, position the computer screen to avoid uh, glare, particularly from the 
overhead lighting or window, use blinds or drapes on the window, replace the light bulb in desk lamp with bulb of low watt. If there is no way to minimize glare from the light source, consider using the screen glare filter. These filters decrease the amount of light reflect from the screen. And computer setting, adjust the screen brightness, increase the text size on the screen. Nighttime mode will reduce the blue light. Uh, remember to blink. This is the very important part. You know our eye, the outer part is the cornea, which is uh, wet by uh, a thin layer of tear film. Uh, every time we blink, uh, our cornea become uh, wet. So when you uh, glue to the screen, children, and sometimes as a parents, we work in the computer, uh, we are staring at the screen, we forget to blink. So uh, cornea uh, become dry. So whenever you blink, the cornea become wet. And uh, when it is dry, it is called uh, exposure. It is called uh, evaporative dryness. The tear film can evaporate and can cause evaporative dryness. This is very common problem with the uh, digital screen users and get get regular vision screening uh, uh, as i mentioned initially this uh, screen doesn't cause any permanent damage in your eyes but it can increase the symptoms and existing condition uh, can increase the symptoms so regular eye checkup with ophthalmologist and he, he can uh, find out if any Ocular surface disease such as very common in this day, dry eyes, allergic conjunctivitis, blepharitis, they can treat. And other very common problem is a refractive error. Uh, you know, far-sightedness, near-sightedness, and the astigmatism. The doctor eye this problem, he can prescribe you a, a medical glass or spectacles. And some children will have this uh, muscle problem, convergence problem, divergence problem. Uh, this uh, I'm not going to very detail about this treatment, but there are things called orthopic exercise for the children and computer glass and the blue light blockers. These computer glasses mean, you know, our vision, uh, there are three components, far vision, intermediate vision and the near vision. In computer, we use our intermediate vision. So somebody has a small even refractive error when using digital screen, they can correct with the computer glasses and blue light blockers uh, now everybody uh, every optometry shop they promote this one uh, so be careful this one there is a there is no proven researchers to say that blue light can cause permanent damage to the retina but this blue lights as dr shyam mentioned uh, can change your psychiatry sleep when they exposed to blue light uh, one hour before sleep, uh, they can change the circadian rhythm and they find difficult uh, to get enough sleep. It can invariably affect the mental illness. Uh, and uh, finally, my last slide is a general measures, regular exercise, stay outside for one hour, uh, adequate hydration, healthy, balanced meal, sufficient sleep. Children should take at least seven to eight hours of sleep. And this is the summary what I talked about, how to avoid eye, uh, eye strain, regular eye checking, eye exercising, proper lighting, monitor cleaning, distance adjusting, glare reducing, font scaling, frequent blinking, glass swearing, and 2020 rules. And thank for your attention. Uh, I am happy to answer end of the session if you have any questions. And I will wind up my session. Once again, thank for the uh, dear chairman, uh, Mr. Priyanka, and the board of directors, and Madam Principal. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the uh, board of directors, and my colleagues, and Madam Principal, and my dear parents. Uh, my topic is uh, the prevalence of COVID 19 in children. Uh, you know, schools. Uh, part of our community and it cannot be run in isolation. When the community level spread of uh, COVID-19 control, we can consider starting school physically. So the current data shows that the Oman has achieved this level. Still, children can be infected and uh, 
can develop disease. Majority of them tend to have no symptoms or very mild disease. Some children develop severe disease, but this is much less severe than in adults. So if you take this prevalence of COVID-19 globally, 7.329% of all positive cases are in uh, pediatric age group. Out of that hospitalized children, eight out of uh, 100,000 population in children. In adults, 165 uh, out of uh, 100,000 population. Uh, when we come to Oman for prevalence of uh, COVID-19 in children, uh, they have done a good study up to Feb uh, July 2020, five month uh, study from February to July. Uh, until July 31st, uh, 68,400 confirmed cases in all over Oman. Out of that, 4,379 were pediatric children uh, up to the age of 14 years. This is 6.6%. Out of these, only 56 were admitted. This is 1.2. This is a good news. 16% uh, of them, they don't have any symptoms. They are asymptomatic. And 80% of them are very mild symptoms. They were not required any hospital admission. So this is 96% of them not required any hospital admission. Uh, they, are, they had asymptomatic or they are with the mild symptom. So in, in total, 56 children, uh, less than 14 years of age, Record hospitalization in uh, uh, tertiary care hospitals in Oman. Uh, so the, if if you consider this uh, study severity wise, 37 children. This is 68 percent of children were ad admitted with the uncomplicated COVID-19. This 37 children were managed in general wards. 13 children, 23 percent. This is. Uh, with pneumonia, this kind of children they managed in high dependence unit for close monitoring and oxygen supply. Uh, five children, only five children out of this 56, only uh, this is nine percent of uh, this five percent, uh, 56 children with the multi system inflammatory syndrome. This still only five, only these five children were admitted to ICU and uh, uh, the stay. Average stay for these five children is five to six days. The other and general ward discharge after two or three days. Like. So age-wise, infants less than one year of age, 23 children out of this 56, this is 41%. Around half of them, out of this 23, half of them are below two months. For our school-going age group is not affected much. So symptom-wise, Fever is the most common symptom. This is 46 out of these 56 children, 46 children admitted with fever, high grade fever and other symptoms, followed by respiratory symptoms like cough, uh, dry cough and uh, sore throat, 33 children. This is 59% and gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, 31 is 55%. Uh, other issue is comorbidity. Com comorbidity is a pre-existing medical condition like asthma, sickle cell disease, chronic uh, 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 respiratory disease. So 22 children out of this 56, this is 39% children, they had an underlying medical condition like sickle cell disease. In uh, Oman, sickle cell disease is common, but in our community it is uh, very less. So uh, in for, for us, uh, like, uh, other nationalities, uh, asthma and other uh, heart disease, these are the common. So for asthmatics, only four children, only four, uh, four children, uh, this is 7% with the chronic respiratory disease. The severe neurological impairment, only four children, uh, 7%. If you come to death, luckily there were no any mortality related to this uh, 56 admission so far. Uh, transmission wise, uh, in this study, 38 children 
had at least one family member with confirmed COVID-19. 68% of them had at least one family member with COVID-19. Uh, so the take home message here is, most children hospitalized with confirmed COVID-19 have a mild course and a favorable outcome. Then other thing is the age group. If you consider the age group, age group uh, mostly most of them are uh, infants. Infant mean less than one year of age and uh, half of them are less than two months. So the school going age group is less, less affected by this uh, COVID-19. Uh, but they started nor any data available uh, with the health ministry so far. So WHO observation about transmission is transmission 0 to 10 year age group significantly less than the adult. The transmission means the uh, disease uh, uh, the child can get from adult then child can give it to any other child or adult. Uh, this uh, transmission is 0 to 10 years of age group, significantly less than adult. But 11 to 18 years of age group is same like adult. They can give the disease. Then the prevention is, as you know, the social distancing uh, and uh, ventilate, ventilating the classroom, uh, teaching in small group. These things are uh, the technical group. They have made a uh, guidelines. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Sudhara will uh, uh, discuss about this and the hand washing for hand washing soap and water uh, or the hand sanitizers but the technique is uh, how to sanitize your hand with hand sanitizer it is a just 30 second work i can show you yeah. uh, I put my uh, put the hands uh, sanitizer solution here. Just rub five times like this, then like this, okay. Then with your palm, then the uh, then uh, the thumb both side. Finally, wrist. This is this will take around 10 seconds. This is the proper way of uh, hand rubbing. Thank you, Irman. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope uh, we had some uh, technical difficulties. Sorry, bear with us. And uh, I think we had a uh, very nice presentation about the uh, psychological implication of online teaching by Dr. Shia uh, and uh, eye, wish, eye problem, mission problems by Dr. Mithyas. And I think it will be very helpful uh, to know about these things and to guide your uh, children uh, to prevent those uh, bad effects. And uh, as uh, Dr. Pyrus, uh, well elaborated about the current prevalence of uh, uh, COVID infection among pediatric population. That's the most important thing because regard, with regard to the school. Uh, as he exactly said, it's very much less prevalence among uh, children and it's more common in the neonates uh, age group. Uh, and uh, the school age is uh, very much less, I would say. That the, the study he was uh, uh, talking about it's the it's very good study and it's uh, done in uh, the beginning of the uh, pandemic and uh, up to july up to the first peak so uh, it was very 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 well organized uh, multi center cohort study done in royal hospital sultan gaus hospital and other uh, regional hospitals so uh, so i would like to now it's the term for the uh, prevalence basically among adult population that supposed to be done by Dr. Vasiharan. Uh, no, uh, now, uh, since he is unable to attend and we are running out of uh, time, uh, I will briefly uh, go about 
I mean, uh, tell you about the myths associated about COVID infection. So these are the myths. Just uh, can you see the screen now? And uh, kindly parents, stretch yourselves, relax. Please now already one hour gone. And as my previous colleague tell now, uh, I think it's going to be boring otherwise. Please, uh, uh, okay, I will try to do it as uh, short as much as possible since you may have some problems also to ask. So, uh, before going to meet, okay, yeah. so uh, before going to the mix, actually, can I see myself there? So, since Dr. Pyro's pre in previous presentation, he, he, he elaborated how to do the ha hand washing. Actually, I wanted to show you that it's, it's correct. Now, you know how to do and make your children to do this hand prop properly, in proper manner, as he said. So, the second important thing is the mask. So, how to wear the mask? Before, before putting up any mask, you must do hand rub. You wash your uh, hand with the soap for 20 to use hand sanitizer. Once you uh, properly sanitize your hands, then you can uh, actually you can get your mask. Now this is mask. So they, they recommend is three layer mask. You can see now there are non-medical masks available. It's okay if it is two or three layers, but we prefer three layer mask, which has three layers to filter the air before and uh, before entering your uh, nose so how to hold the mask you should not hold the mask in the middle okay you should hold the mask now your hands are sanitized you hold the mask from the edges and when you get the mask it's, it's flat like this isn't it so we 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 should, the idea is we should cover mask with our nose mouth and the chin this all three areas should be covered so we hold the mask from behind like this like this don't ever touch the mask because now hands are sanitized you can hold it from behind and put it like over the nose and here yeah, like this and you can down you can adjust your mask like this the first time if you want to adjust from here you can put there is the metallic part here you can adjust it that's the only time you touch the mask because you have to adjust this one once you put the mask like this you should not touch your mask at any cost in the front side so if you touch that one, whatever the virus in, in, the, in the front side, you will get into your hands and you will give it to the other person. When you are touching any place, you will give it that. So how to remove the mask? So when you are removing the mask, you should again not touch the, the mask from the front side. So again, removing also the WHO, uh, they recommend to wash your hands again. Okay. And then you uh, remove it from behind. In this step you can have, otherwise there are some straps you are tightening from behind you can remove from there and hold it from the inner side don't ever touch the mask in the outer side inner aspect you hold it remove it if there are straps it's easily you can remove from the ears otherwise you can touch from the inside and dispose into a closed bin so that's how you should uh, uh, how to uh, dispose the mask uh, so that's the first thing is the hand washing, what we want to stress. And second thing is the mask. And the third thing is the S, the space. So easy to remember, HMS, hand, mask, and the space. Now the current recommendation is you should have space between individuals 1.5 meters minimum. So 1.5 to 2 meters, 1.5 meters, or that means 6 feet. So when whenever we have meeting or when in the classroom, we should maintain this social distance those are the three important things i would like to stress so now i will uh, and regarding the current uh, i don't have a presentation powerpoint but i will tell regarding the current uh, uh, covid status in omar actually as the, my previous speakers told it's uh, it's well controlled and uh, we don't have much cases we don't have much patients in icu at icu much very much less and uh, yesterday i found only 171 new cases in whole oman and there were no deaths so this is not only in Amphos hospital all over the oman moh and everybody confirmed and uh, it's it's very well controlled because of this our supreme committee advice and they have 
will will uh, will uh, control the plan and will uh, will elaborate it, uh, i mean guidelines and uh, fine system that's why i think uh, it's well controlled so now uh, uh, and most of the time they ask about the uh, new strain of virus they have found new strain of virus as far as i know very few not that much like in uk you see in these days so it's much less cases now we are getting so i'm um, this corona status is daily updating and it's changed so this current evidence i am talking to you about but it can be changed in next few weeks or few months but we should as a school we should have a plan to how to start school in a healthy manner that's why uh, we formulated uh, with uh, the board uh, the uh, health safety guidelines uh, how to start in a safe manner uh, to take our students to the uh, school this is solely based on the moh guidelines so uh, in this country we have to obey the country's law which already they have given uh, proper well elaborated guidelines i can uh, share you in a while uh, about to how to start school uh, in a health uh, health with health precautions they have given us recommendations so based on that recommendation and with our experience we formulated another set of guidelines so before going to the guidelines i this most of the time uh, a lot of parents ask me about these myths and uh, this sent by my m1 of an uh, emerge doctor dr zaina thank you very much for sharing this one and i will go this 12 minutes in a fast manner so first thing uh, they they think that sometimes uh, whether this virus can be transmitted to goods produced in countries like uh, there yeah, there's high fever like uh, earlier they didn't take any uh, goods from china so it's it's wrong it's not like that virus can't survive uh, from uh, you know it has to come from ships and it has you uh, exposed to different uh, temperatures and it won't last that much time uh, till you get by your some item but this thing uh, now once any goods in a supermarket in a surface if if any infected person go and cough or touch that can be deposited on the surface of any item that's why we ask when you buy vegetable fruits when you take them back home and wash it wash it nicely with soap or uh, any uh, uh, any any this thing uh, uh, to prevent you get infection because there were some cases especially with the the the, the, the items the plastic bags this virus uh, those who are at home got infection through these groceries so the second one and uh, they think whether this is uh, any this virus transmit through the mosquitoes there is no any evidence that uh, this this is new corona virus is transmitting through uh, okay. mosquito it's basically transmit through the air droplets and direct contact and and uh, uh, this main important thing is the wash your hands so this this can virus you virus you basically it enter our, our body in three roads through your nose mouth and the eyes so if you cover your nose and ma- mouth and wear the protective uh, spectacles you are most of the time protected so there is no way this virus is uh, uh, I, i mean that there is up to now they have not uh, found the virus is uh, transmitting through uh, mosquito but it's only through the saliva and the direct contact so then sometimes they ask uh, how about the clothes our clothes yes of course somebody is positive if cough at you the virus can get on your clothes especially in the hospital healthcare workers that's why whenever we go to hospital and come out we it's not only the hospital in even outside we don't know who by who is infected or not so it's it's advisable to wash your hair clothes before and uh, i mean uh, when you whenever you go outside and after the long day you are coming home and put all the clothes into the uh, separately into the washing machine this is for all parents i would suggest please wash them especially when you send your children uh, to host the school also wash it uh, they are clothes daily you have to wash apart from the showering every day you should wash your clothes using the detergent or soap soap enough uh, simple soap simple washing machine liquid fine it should be in the 60 to 90 degree they recommend or else you can once you uh, wash it you can put them in sunlight 
or keep in a high temperature dry so that will kill the virus so this is this is the way we don't get the virus into our crops and this is the funny thing and uh, sometimes they ask uh, whether drinking alcohol will covid prevent covid no way because um, even though all hand sanitizing agents are based on 70% alcohol so uh, there is no any any evidence that uh, you, the alcohol inside your body will kill the virus it's a respiratory disease and uh, there is no any uh, you should not drink alcohol to get out of actually these uh, these things even my some of my friends school friends they ask uh, because you are washing <laughs> these are not uh, it's not a joke actually but uh, sometimes the people tend to drink a lot of beers and a uh, lot of alcohol to just to prevent the virus so it's it's just a myth completely myth no way uh, I'll rush through the and sometimes some people think in a very hot climate uh, the virus won't survive. There's no evidence like that because uh, the virus, as all know, is a global pandemic. It's in the northern hemisphere and uh, in the Middle East and Southeast Asia everywhere. So in the hot and cold any climate, it, it fast. Now you see the United Kingdom, they they have a new new strain and it's far, uh, spreading very fast, and they have winter. So there's no evidence like that, uh, that hot climate will kill the virus. Mm. So all the time they are encouraging this personal hygiene. Wash your hands, cover your mouth whenever you sneeze or cough and wear a mask. So the other thing is now everywhere they are checking the temperature. Now, if you have fever, sometimes people think, so fever means that is COVID. And no fever means no COVID. We cannot say like this because this virus has an incubation period of 14 days. That means when virus goes into a person's body, it will it has from one to 14 days to, to show up the symptoms like fever, cough, sore throat, shortness of breath, loss of uh, smell or taste. So this will that's it, that's the time, and that time maybe you are carrying the virus. But your viral load, that means the number of virus in your body is much less. There should be a certain amount of viral load for you to develop symptoms. Uh, that is called viral load. That's why we, we tried, we, we all are all, almost all the time exposing to this virus. But if you develop certain number of viral load, you will uh, show up the symptoms. So that's why we need to minimize the viral load. How to minimize the viral load? Basic things, hand washing, daily bath, with soap and all and uh, wearing mask those things will minimize and apart from that this whole water gargle I, I would suggest in the guidelines also daily salt water gargle and uh, washing your nostrils with soap would prevent the virus that's actually according to our Dr. Vaziara and uh, that, that's what they say they, they advise their patients to do these things uh, regularly so it will reduce the viral so there's fever simply means it does not no fever means no he cannot say he has no uh, covid so some people think that uv bulbs can kill the virus so it will do more harm than the virus actually if you need this uh, uv uh, light and uh, it will cause more skin problem it can irritate your skin and burn sometimes and it won't cause any protection so and the other thing this is very important one huh? Some people think that spraying alcohol, especially in supermarkets and you are bathing with alcohol. Uh, and some alcohol beds uh, spray directly into your body. There's no evidence because this spray, if it goes to the eyes, uh, it will cause uh, eye issues, eye damage your tissues, especially like eyes and lips. So don't use directly alcohol sprays on your body to sanitize the uh, whole body. There's no evidence like that. And uh, some people think that eating garlic will prevent COVID-19. It's uh, no way. Garlic, of course, has some antimicrobial effects. But there, currently, there are no evidence to support that garlic can prevent uh, this virus. And uh, about the vaccine. So uh, can pneumonia vaccine? There are a lot of vaccines, you know, flu vaccine, uh, pneumococcal, uh, some vaccines given to prevent pneumonia. So even though COVID-19 is basically the cause uh, severe pneumonia, this usual uh, pneumonia vaccine which are targeted on bacteria 
and uh, some some viruses will not affect on uh, covid 19 because because this is a newly strained virus and now they you know now there are several vaccines in the world and oman we are we are getting now we received vaccine from uh, pfizer vaccine and they are being given uh, we are being given this virus uh, sorry the, the vaccine for healthcare workers first and they are targeting the uh, they have a vaccine plan in this country and they are going to give the general population the vaccine it's very soon actually we had the first dose now uh, so as i told you the rinsing nose regularly but even though this is they, they say it's no benefit but rinsing your nose regularly with salt water but saline solution or simple salt water it will help it will help to uh, get rid of common cold as well but it won't pre i mean it won't cure the covid virus but it will as i told you earlier it will pre prevent the viral load this is the most important thing so is there any drug that can prevent or treat covid 19 no no drugs so far they have so those are the 12 myths i wanted to discuss and uh, so uh, depending on uh, now now as i told you in the, from the beginning we had three meetings with the bod and the parent committee and the school administration so we formulate the guidelines or guidelines i mean actually the the, the board uh, formulated guidelines but we just uh, gave them advice on that and uh, this is almost 90 percent uh, we finalized and uh, so just a matter of a few days uh, that you will uh, get to know about the guidelines how to start uh, school so here what i want to stress is uh, as my previous colleague uh, told about the online the, the drawbacks of online education and uh, and we forgot to mention you about the physical activity now most of our children are obese i think you all parents um, uh, expo, uh, experience this one and all the uh, as dr mithya has told now all the time dr shyam all the time uh, we they are in front of the computer online teaching and the physical education as at the in previous sessions also i told uh, principal madam please encourage uh, children uh, to do more pe activities that's why i told even during the blended learning if you can give them everyday pe sessions i don't know it's powerful and uh, sometimes maybe it uh, uh, sirs <laughs> annoy me and uh, get angry with me but see the physical education is very important and at the moment they are doing it online but you you cannot guarantee i, I, mean, I mean some students we know they are not doing it they just uh, turn off their camera I, I have several times seen that sir is shouting open your camera open your cameras uh, so the child can cheat of course the children are children so please parents please do encourage your children to be active more active I know it's very, very difficult to be active in a close environment, but uh, the recommendations is give more time rather than the screen time. We cannot uh, avoid, uh, I mean, avoid the screen time because of online teaching, but uh, keep them more active. Uh, so we will try, I, that's why we suggest school also to give more PE sessions when they start the school. Uh, so these are the guidelines. I have not go through all the guidelines because this will be, uh, I think, uh, given to the all parents uh, in, a, in a few days. Um, what I want to highlight is I, I told them a few things. Now I told you about hand, mask, and space and physical activity. And uh, so now home-based screening. Now I will just go to the phone. So this is how uh, we are going to screen the uh, students. Screening can be done. Uh, apologies, this is not the final uh, guideline we uh, we made, and it will uh, we need to add. I'm just uh, showing you how to do a screening process. Uh, is it okay if I go through this one? Yes. Uh, so parents, uh, we suggest as most of the thing I told to uh, see. I don't have time to go through each and all guidelines, but roughly, pay as parents, uh, you should you should uh, monitor your child health. Especially, what I want to stress: if your child has cough, common cold, fever, shortness of breath. Um, uh, and those are the symptoms. And any if he says, uh, and I, I can't feel uh, any taste. So those are the symptoms uh, you are 
directing to the COVID-19. It's, it's not only COVID-19, it all covers all basic, uh, uh, I mean, uh, viral infection. So for the sakeness of others, please don't send your child if he is sick, basically. Even common cold, don't send the child to the school. That's the message we are, we are giving you. And uh, they are going to take only the healthy children who do not have any upper respiratory tract symptoms will be allowed to come to the school. And they will be, uh, the, how do you screen your child at home? This is the one. You will check whether they have symptoms. Then please send them a small sanitizer bottle with them uh, and teach them how to sanitize their hand. Uh, be careful, don't give sanitizers to children uh, age uh, up to grade uh, five because uh, I mean, uh, they don't know how to, they can sell it. It's very dangerous. The other children above grade uh, five and six, uh, six and above, they, you can give them. And please send a water bottle, separate one. And the most important message is, please tell your children not to share anything with other students. This is very important, even though we are running out of time. Uh, if if you share, I mean, I know these children are children, as I told you earlier. They they will uh, they they were taught to share in the school also. They had few sessions of sharing and caring. So it's not it's time to give up sharing at the time being because of this pandemic. If you share the pencil with other other child, child even though he, he will not show any symptom of virus, suppose if he carries, if he is a symptomatic carrier, that means he had the virus, you will take the virus to your children and he will take this pencil and erase at home and you and your elderly parents at your home are at risk. This is the most important thing because children, they won't get the infection, but they can be still can be carriers from their utensils and by school bags, from their shoes, from their clothes. This is the most important. We have to balance this. We have to prevent the virus and we have to start the school, both this. So we have to balance and then we'll come to a conclusion. That's why we want you all to be educated about this. So what you can do, daily wash your children's clothes, daily uh, sanitize the shoes and the school bags at home. How to sanitize school bags? You can simple uh, Lysol based sponge and you can have that one, or you can use alcohol based spray. Uh, for the shoes before he he or she enter into the uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, home and salt water gargle encourage them salt water gargle daily and wash their nostrils with soap when they whenever you when they when they bath so this is very important and uh, the question asked from the board also what we are wearing about the uh, gloves the gloves we do not recommend to wear because especially children they wear the gloves they will not wash their hand so wearing gloves will not prevent the infection per se unless you go to a patient now in 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 social uh, i mean in schooling and all they if you wear the gloves you come in the school bus you touch everywhere and come to school they will not wash their hand because you have the gloves so rather than wearing gloves we recommend what come wear it hand no problem but tell them not to touch surfaces too much and whenever you touch surface you have to use alcohol rub also the remind me as uh, dr waziharan asked me to remind you all if you uh, use alcohol based sanitizing uh, this gel it will con alcohol part will spray out but the the contents these other contents will will keep it as a layer in your hand so whenever you sanitize again next time it won't help so they recommend four times if you use hand gel then you must use soap and water to wash your hands so those are the basic things so <clears throat> So the next uh, about the uh, school screening, I told you how to we are, how we are going to do. It will be uh, this will be sent. Children will be temperature checked, then hand wash, and they will taken into the classes. And uh, initially, they are going to start uh, the foundation and the uh, advanced level classes. So there won't be uh, this step. now these things. Now regarding the teachers, uh, I just want to elaborate this point on teachers and our staff, academic staff. And a lot of teachers uh, were worrying whether to wear, wear the, the, about the personal protective equipment, full PPE. There is no necessary to wear full PPE unless you go to a COVID confirmed patient. So now the children are coming to school, we don't know they have the virus, but if they have, uh, if they have virus which can be transmitted to you, that means definitely they will have uh, the fever. And I mean, most of the time, 80% as the previous uh, they told, 80% they will have fever. So, so the asymptomatic carriers, you won't get much viral load. That's what I want to say. So 
no need necessarily to wear uh, the, especially the foundation teachers if you wear a ppe the children will be i mean i i don't know i mean it's, it will be difficult for you to teach but i would we would recommend you to wear a surgical mask and if you really uh, scared of this you can wear n95 mask it's okay but surgical mask with, with this one and i would suggest this uh, if you are wearing spectacle is okay otherwise you can use this uh, plain spectacle uh, now if 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 any teacher Or oh, still with COVID nineteen, we have to isolate for ten days. That's what I told. If the PCR positive, confirm case. If uh, that's the first thing. If you get a contact with the positive patient or confirm case, that means your father or mother got uh, COVID. You should not come to school, and you should inform the school administration immediately. And you should isolate. I mean, that is that means not isolate. That means quarantine at home for fourteen days. That's the current uh, evidence. Uh, sorry, current guidelines in MOH. Uh, they publish. So we have to be uh, do the same in our school as well. So contact cases, 14 days quarantine. If you contact with the virus, I mean uh, the person who had virus, and if you get virus, you have to quarantine 10 days from the day you get the positive result. That means you have you might had virus earlier, but you do the test in the day three or four. Now, from that day on, most ten days you have to quarantine. So uh, now these are the symptoms, as I told you earlier: fever. Uh, th these things you know. Oh, sorry, uh, fever, cough, uh, uh, shortness of breath, loss of smell. These things are in the principles. Uh, Community. Uh, this one you sent to you already. Runny nose. So if your child has these symptoms, especially diarrhea, nowadays even appendicitis comes, uh, COVID comes like appendicitis. Now this uh, like that. Any any abdominal pain also you have to be more worried. So uh, so if, please don't send your child if, if they have these type of symptoms. So the regarding teachers, I think I think I answered most of the things. Uh, shall we uh, wind up and give them a chance? Okay, no. Sorry for this. Uh, we took a lot of time because uh, it's not an easy task to cover all the things. And uh, while finally, I would like to thank all my colleagues who, who uh, gave us immense support in making uh, these guidelines and the, this event success, especially uh, the doctors who are here and uh, the doctors who are in uh, Moish and other doctors. Yeah, a lot of doctors help us. And I would like to take this chance to invite uh, the old doctors. Uh, I mean, in the, our parent community, uh, parent uh, society, I know a lot of doctors we have in our school. Please uh, come forward and uh, help us during this time, especially we are planning to do some health camp for our teachers. We have to protect our teachers. So uh, you are very, most welcome uh, if you like to uh, help the school. I hope so. And uh, dear parents, uh, thank you very much for listening for a long time. And I think uh, this discussion would be an immense support for you. And I will uh, hand over to uh, Mr. Chairman uh, the session. And thank you very much for you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sudara and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Siam, Dr. Fairuz, and Dr. Imitias. Uh, now I would like to invite. Uh, uh, Madam Principal, uh, Mrs. Nirmala Lenage, to uh, give you a little bit of an insight, a very short introduction about how well the school is prepared uh, on behalf of acc accommodating the students. So, Madam Principal, now this is the time for you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, all the doctors. Um, I will explain. I, I, I think the first I have to thank all the doctors. So after that, I will explain uh, how we are going to do the start, reopening of school. So good evening to all uh, doctors whom we have invited today for this forum, chairman and the board of directors, staff, parents, and my dear students. Opening school is an enormous decision that the management has to take considering the future of our dearest children. Virtual learning is important at a juncture like this. But now, when the whole world is embracing the situation, converting and arranging things with the pandemic, we at SLSM will also methodically, strategically, 
convert ourselves to embrace the new normal. The school is taking many precautionary methods to welcome our children safely, and we strive to continue the blended learning program. We need your support, dear parents. Most importantly, after listening to the medical professionals, I'm sure you are aware of the procedures now. I believe, according the instructions you receive, you will adhere to the guidelines which will be sent to you and assist to continue this process. This all will not be possible if I did not receive the support from various sectors. I would like to pay my gratitude towards the management of the school for assisting and guiding towards the blended learning program. Then my heartfelt appreciation goes to the parents committee and the parents who came forward in assisting the school for this huge task of blended learning. Most importantly, my appreciation goes to the panel of doctors, namely Dr. Sudhara, Dr. Shyam Faru, Dr. Imtiaz, Dr. Heros, who is not attended today, but the previous session who was with us, Dr. Vasiharan, and who helped us in numerous ways to prepare the guideline, Dr. Prabhat and Dr. Ziana, and all other doctors and parents for educating, motivating, and enlightening us about the current situation in the world and in Oman and guiding us to commence the school with safety hands. Thank you so much for all your support. Next, I would like to present my thanks to my staff for continuing the online teaching sessions and providing quality education to our children. Now they are getting ready to welcome the students under the blended learning program. I'm thankful to all the parents for being with us, encouraging us and always providing us the required assistance and constructive feedback. We are impatiently waiting to welcome our darling children in school. We assure their safety and request the parents to send them without any doubt. Thank you, every single who helped us, guide us to achieve this target. So that's my thanksgiving, but uh, when Chairman asked to enlighten you uh, with a small, uh, a brief uh, uh, description that what is our plan, uh, we have planned uh, with all kind of resources as per MOE guidelines, MOH guidelines, and the doctors, parents committee. Uh, it's not principal and the staff task. It's a, a huge panel with a lot of professionals in different areas uh, got together and uh, made this because we really wanted to invite our children to school uh, as doctor, all the doctors mentioned here, they are peer uh, co uh, as co coordination assistance. The peer group concept is highly um, needed now because the children are isolated at home for quite a long time. 15th of March, we close. From that day, our children are at home. They are very active all the other days, but past few months, there are all there were all restrictions. Now also there, but the things are becoming smoother. It means we can give a start. So the starting is to the A-level class because those children are going to the exam uh, in May, June. Uh, we cannot call the entire school uh, even though we got the permission because we also should see how gradually we can improve the number of students. So first of all, the A-level students will call to school to do their practicals and the case studies which are related to science, maths and commerce streams. Their numbers are few, so it is easy for us to accommodate and see how we can move forward. And the same day, 24th of January, Key Stage 1, we have already uh, 10 to 12 admissions. We are calling that section also only key, uh, only sorry foundation one not the key stage one foundation one why we are calling foundation one foundation one class we usually starts in september 
But this year, September, we did not start school and we did not have the school. Therefore, uh, those children, we have not admitted to school. The reason why we did not admit them to school, uh, they that's the first day of their schooling after three years being at home. So the teachers are strangers to them. All the parents know the very first day, the very first week, they cry because they are changing their environment from home to school with unknown faces. So it means we must see them. And uh, therefore, his uh, foundation one will be uh, started from 24th of January. After that, after two weeks time, we'll be taking next examination two classes. That's his stage four, grade 10 and grade 11. So likewise, we'll be taking 25% uh, of each class per day uh, until the end of this term. So if the things are better and we are confident with the children do not get this the teachers even though they are the careers they also in safe hand and like dr sudhar i am so grateful to you and thankful to you your, your speech everywhere you mentioned about the staff our you said it's our staff it's lovely uh, you said we need to protect our staff so that's thank you so much of your care and the concern about my staff so we need to see how our staff is their health condition because some are there they have some uh, health issues so how those people will uh, teachers will react everything we have to see not only your children because at uh, dr Firo said uh, the children do not get all the doctors i think said the ch children it's uh, the containing impacting this is very less percentage it's a very very low percentage but our we teachers are at a risk but we are ready to accept that risk that is to give the betterment and the education to your children so what i am asking my dear parents uh, do not get scared school is ready to embrace your children with the safety hands and we'll take this uh, uh, we do not uh, uh, ignore any situation but as parents you are you also having a responsibility to work that is if any symptom, symptom as the doctor said, uh, your child is having, we will send in a, a document. Uh, whatever the documents, all those, if those symptoms are there, please do not send your child to school. Because uh, at the same time, when they are learning in the class, 25%, 75% will be at home. So it's a live screening. They will be learning online. So there will be no disturbance. There will be no difference of uh, blended learning. Only thing is 10, 10 children, maximum 10 children will be seated in the class physically while other 30, 30 students are at home. So the next day, the other batch come, the two day batch will be at home. So uh, every week your child is having one day to attend to school, four days. The classes will be divided to A, B, C, D groups. Those things with the class list we will be sending soon. And your child is attending only for one day. But we teachers are attending every day. Therefore, you need to protect us. Uh, any symptoms, please keep the children at home. And also, parents are not allowed to come inside the school uh, because adults it get soon, you know. Uh, fee paying, I'm encouraging all the parents to pay online, but in case if you have to come, please uh, come after 7.30 once we have put the children into the classrooms. So then our lobby is free and uh, we, you can uh, smoothly uh, pay your fees or any other books or maybe kids could be purchased. So thank you very much, dear parents uh, and students. Hope you will adhere to all the guidelines what we are expecting you to send in your course. And my uh, thank again to the, all the doctors and the board of directors who arranged this workshop to educate parents. And thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you, Madam Principal. Now we are come 
coming to the end of this uh, particular session. Uh, Mark Twain once said that continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. This is what exactly we are trying to do by opening the school uh, on phase wise basis in order to give the, our, Hello, our students uh, the desired the desired uh, outcome of the education as explained by the doctors and uh, as i have told you we are continuously trying to improve our position with the help of the doctors uh, with the help of the uh, staff with the help of the parents committee who have been very supportive as well as with the help of the parents and all the stakeholders of Sri Lankan School Musket. So uh, with that, uh, if, there are, if there are any questions that we can have about the 10-minute session in order to get yeah. some idea, especially with respect yeah, to the... I have a uh, question, Yes, uh, with respect to the uh, doctors, uh, since uh, the doctors are here, uh, the, uh, the presentations which have been done by the doctors, doctors are ready to answer your questions. So we'll mini uh, we will minimize the question and answer time uh, to maximum 10 minutes. And after that, if you have any questions, you can always route it through the Madam Principal uh, and we will take them forward to the correct people to answer you. Okay, you may have your questions and I'll be asking Dr. Sudhara to come here. Thank you. Hello, actually, uh, it is not related to the doctors mainly, but it is related to the timings and the timetables for Foundation One. Uh, how many days you will be going for the, they will be going full days or what are the timing from seven to or eight till which time? So this we need to know. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, Foundation One. Uh, usual time, 7 uh, teachers are expecting to take children at 7.30 as usual and we'll uh, conduct the session till 10.30. Okay, this will continue or only yes. for first because our bigger child, it was for first three days or first four days, uh, then return to 12 uh, p.m. So it will be continuous because I have to arrange a transportation. So I have to know the timing which we will continue with. We are continuing the same time. Uh, it is 7.30 to 10.30. Okay, and this it will be uh, uh, like uh, one week at home and one week at school or they will continue no. all, the, all the day? They will continue because one week at home means actually what our purpose is uh, the teacher, the child should uh, identify the teacher. If we keep yeah, one week yeah. home, they, they'll forget the teacher. So they'll be coming every day because there's only 10 students at the moment enrolled. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? Uh, the, the question from the parent committee, I, and uh, they ask about the uh, the mask. We are in the mask. So what currently uh, uh, the MOH guideline according to the MOH, the guidelines issued in last year, end of last year, what they recommend is uh, up to uh, up to grade four. One to four, they say no need uh, to wear a mask. But grade five to twelve, they must wear a mask. But we would encourage our students age more than six, that means grade one to four. If they can wear masks properly, if they know how to wear, it's okay, you can wear. And uh, it's important, but but if there is uh, the foundation kids, we don't recommend, no need to uh, wear mask at all. The, the, the current, uh, current uh, recommendation from the MOH, from grade five upwards. So we are still in the discussion whether we, uh, we do the same and uh, we will send you the updated guidelines very soon. So if you think your child need to wear a mask, if he can wear a mask, even he is from in from grade one to five, we would say, okay, it's okay, let them wear a mask. But we would ask all the students from grade six onwards, they must wear a mask. Uh, doctor, I'm Cicero Di Silva, physical education teacher. I want yes, to clarify a small thing. Uh, when we do our activity, can we ask them to remove the mask or they have to remain with the mask? 
uh, this thing is now the, during physical activity uh, we have to first thing is space them proper distance we can yeah. maintain the school itself and yeah. the mask it's very difficult to do exercise with the mask if you keep the distance it's okay that for that brief period they can remove the mask because when you are doing the exercise sometimes the child can suffocate when you are breathing uh, very rapidly the, the mask go inside and it's, it's difficult for them so it's okay i think it's uh, for that time to remove the mask okay thank you doctor Uh, yes. You yes. You can. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I want to ask about the same the timing for uh, grade four and grade five. How it will be groups? It will be not all the children will go every day. So uh, yeah. how it will be group group? The uh, how we yeah. know that our kids is in group A or in group B? How do we That's know it? it? Yeah. Yes. Then what is the time? It will be continuously that, that now take that, one. Uh, decided 25 percent of the students. No, it's like this. 25 percent of the students. Uh, if, uh, Madam Principal, uh, please correct me if, if I am wrong. So 25 percent of the students will come on the Sunday. So next 25 percent will come on Monday. Like that. Up yes, to I know. Wednesday. I know that percentage is okay. But how to know my kid is in in the first day? Or in the that second is, day, that, or in that, that day. we will inform in coming, coming. This is this awareness session that, as I told you, the final guideline and how to you know, group your uh, kids into uh, different uh, timetables and where, which 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 uh, group of students will come on each class. That will be notified yes. you in the uh, teams. Don't worry about that. That yes. they will inform. Then, uh, yes. Okay. The time the timetable will be continuous till one thirty or only to ten thirty. Same timetable, they will continue. The whoever comes into the school will be taught physically, uh, and other 25% at home will uh, learn in the same one online. There's no. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it, it will be full day or only till 10 30. Full day, full day, 7 30 to, to 1 30. 1 30, yes. 7 30 to uh, 1 30. Same. For, for same grade time. 4 and grade day. 5 to 1 to 1 30. No, no. Uh, no. Is it so what she mentioned about the key, uh, foundation up to 10 30 only uh, other classes yeah. yes other classes yeah other, other classes till 1 30. till 1 30. Hello. okay hello madam hello. yeah uh, yes how are you the alhamdulillah fine yeah now key stage Foundation one will start at 7.30 that, and they will finish at 10.30, right? Yeah. Foundation key stage one, that is grade one and two, will start yeah. at 7.30 and finish at 12 o'clock, okay? Uh -huh. Foundation key stage two, your two kids are in key stage two, grade four, grade five. Yeah. They're following the key stage two. Key stage two upwards, our normal school hours, 7.30 to 1.30. So the school is, your children will be attended from 7.30 to 1.30. 1.30. Either on, online or physical. The timetable is for your kids, 7.30 yeah. to 1.30. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, okay. And then is, uh, I ask them how, how to know my, my kids' group in day uh, and Sunday or yes, Saturday or yes. whatever. Please it will be, uh, you can remember I, I mentioned this in my speech. Uh, we will be sending because we are not uh, at once start the whole school. It's gradually two weeks, two weeks time. Therefore, yeah. uh, whenever your children's classes come, we will be sending a prior notice which group your children are and what are the timings of them, what is the timetable of them. That will be communicated by myself to all the parents in the particular key stage level. Okay, thank you. Mean, means you, you're honored to do that. Uh, next week it will be online totally. Yes, yes, yes. Next, three to, next two to three weeks, grade four, five will be online totally. Because okay. we are taking first day level, then the O level, then the grade mm -hmm. seven, eight, and then only it comes to three, four, five. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, if you have any question regarding the health issues, uh, since we have the our panel of doctors, you can ask them any question. Doctor, this face yeah. shield won't uh, work for the children? Face shields only? Uh, no, actually face shield is no, no need. And I mean, uh, the wearing face shield, as I told you, uh, it should be usually we wear the face shield when we go to a COVID positive patient in ICU or in the ward. That's what even doctors do. Full, full. It's a part of the PPE. So if you are really concerned, uh, you can send with the uh, plain, as I told you earlier, plain spectacles. The spectacles in the, some uh, Google like thing. So uh, uh, actually, face shield, wearing face shield, and children, I don't think uh, they will keep the fashion, isn't it, Dr. Pyrus? Yes. Uh, it's not recommended, actually. OK? Uh, OK, at the moment, because they are attending to some classes, okay. face to face Islam, some classes, but in there, they are using this face shield. That's why I thought maybe it work. Uh -huh. I'm not no, quite sure. Even, the, even the ministry guidelines, we, we, we based on ministry guidelines, they don't recommend the face sheets. What they say, only the mask and, and we to teach them how to do proper hand washing and educate them daily. Even during the classes, we asked our teachers to educate the children each one hour, at least five minutes, uh, what to do, children, how to do uh, hand washing, how do not to share the foods you know, and uh, utensils. Those things, uh, teacher will be uh, teaching on the, uh, the coming days. So uh, the, we don't suggest uh, this one uh, face mask. Uh, only we so for a face shield. Only we, we are telling them the mask, uh, and, uh, and better to educate them how to use the mask as I told you earlier properly. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, hello. Any other question? Yeah, doctor. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, as per the ministry guideline, parents who wish to send th uh, their children to school, they can send. If parents do not wish to send to the school, they can keep that home. In such a scenario, you know, uh, if you if the school break 25 percent, how they are going to break, you know, do the, you know, from the previous uh, questionnaire, I'm not sure they have gathered the information with the with the they are not willing to send their children or not. If you divide uh, yeah. by person without knowing that one, sometimes maybe students are not in a class where we, where a teacher might have to come and just yes, yes. That's a that's a practical question actually. Yeah, you are correct. So that's what actually the previous questionnaire. Uh, most of the parents uh, voted as not to send. I mean, eighty percent. That's why they went to that uh, different timetable. But that that's the point actually. Why we organize this session today? And uh, and as parent, we should know now. Now today's session, I think you got idea about the drawbacks on online teaching. That's why we present uh, plus, uh, two presentations: psychological implications and eye problem. So everything in life has risk. What I say, I am a surgical doctor. So if every, everything you know, when you are doing a surgery, it has a risk and benefits. Suppose you get, uh, I, I will tell from my experience. So see, you you do appendectomy. So you if you don't do that. You will have a set of complications. If you do it, you will get cured. But during surgery, you can have some risk involved. Same like in everything in the life. So now, current pandemic, uh, are we going to continue online or are we going to uh, start the school? Now, ministry has already given a green light to start schools from 17th onward. And we, based on their guideline in this country, we obey the law in this country and we formulate our own guidelines to our school because ministry asked to formulate them. That's why we help the administration to uh, formulate the uh, guidance. So if any parent does not wish to send the child, I think it is not, uh, not advisable. It's your right not to send the child to school. It's OK. But your point is, uh, if there are less number of students, what are we going to this, this issue we discussed during the meeting. So first, uh, we will send you the guidelines. We will now we 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 aware. We give you some awareness session, and we will send you the guidelines very soon. Uh, and uh, then first week, we will we will see how we face. Now, now see, we have to start something, and we if we don't start, we don't know how to go. There. During the first week, we I think they are going to uh, see the uh, attendance, and uh, depending on that, we will change. Uh, they will change basically. That's the plan, I think. Am I correct, Shama? Uh, yes. 
I think you are, got your answer for your question. Yeah, I got the answer. Yes. Yeah, I, rather than going for trial and error yeah. method, take yeah. take upfront who is willing. Yeah. Then you can identify whether it is a you know uh, high density class yeah. or low density class. Yeah. Then you can have yeah. go as per yeah. the ministry guidelines. Yeah. If it is a low, low density or not, that's what I'm saying. You know, rather than going for a trial and error, yes, you can educate the parent first, then have the questionnaire and get to know what parent want. Then you can decide whether the class is high density or not. Even if it is not school, you cannot say high density or not. Class wise, you can say whether it is high density or not. Yes, I'll give you a chance to answer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Janaka, I, I tend to agree with you. Now, this particular session is a game changer in order to embed uh, on the minds of the parents that uh, to uh, to uh, get them motivated to come to the school. But as you have rightly stated, uh, we have to get uh, now whether the parents with the change of the law and with the change of the circumstances, whether the parents have changed their opinion. Let me just share with you. Uh, there are 27 percent parents who said that who is willing to come to the school. And the balance uh, opined that they will not come to the school, not come to the school in the sense they, they wanted to go with the online, right? But the law has now changed as well as uh, we are giving awareness and we are giving comfort to the parents uh, to uh, start the school uh, in, as soon as possible in the physical mode. But as you have rightly stated, we'll be doing a, a, a survey uh, in, in a very short period of time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 the class on 24th uh, January, but it's still yes, not uh, yes. 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 Miss, I, uh, I want to know, since since it yeah. will be it will be a, a full day a full school day for uh, for uh, for stage two for stage three and four. So the kids should uh, take with them their lunch books, their water bottle, everything. Or the canteen will be there. Uh, they should be taught yeah, about nah. how not to share, how to care about their their food, their own things their personal yes. things everything they will take it with them yes they have to take a water bottle as i told you earlier the, to prevent uh, the gross infection and uh, the school has decided i think to close the cafeteria for the, uh, the, the program. and later uh, they will uh, start it later with the this one according to the uh, i mean the, the guidelines we can open the school i mean open the cafeteria later but since very small number of children are coming to the school, and uh, they have, I think, decided to uh, not to open cafeteria from the beginning. So you have uh -huh. to send everything from the home. So then about the t physical uh, subjects like uh, music, like uh, ICT, like uh, PE, they will they will have it at school. Since that communication, it will not be that accurate. That they are kids. They, they don't know how to control themselves, it will be okay? Uh, <laughs> you mean uh, you mean the music classes and all? Music and keyboards. PE and keyboards, ICT. Uh, keyboards, we ask them to sanitize the keyboards after each each uh, children. Everything is there in the guide. Like, I mean, and the PE. Guidelines, that's why I told you. And we, they will sanitize, sanitize all the keyboards after each student it's, it's a ministry guideline so you have to sanitize after each student's keyboard uh, teacher has to sanitize uh, dear parents uh, actually uh, school related questions you can ask from me after the doctor's session i mean another day with an appointment you can because i'm well aware of it what i have to inform the parents uh, once the different play stages starts but this important time is to ask any medical health related questions because the doctors are not with us all the time. This golden opportunity for you to ask health concerned questions, not academic questions. Academic okay. questions you can ask anytime from me. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry, ma'am.
Sorry. Sorry, doctor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions uh, regarding uh, regarding any uh, psychological issues? You can ask Dr. Shyam is here regarding the psychological behaviors and psychological problems you face. I will give chance doc to Dr. Shyam. Okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but an important uh, opinion I didn't uh, sort of. Uh, uh, you know, tell this take home message, the real purpose, like uh, Dr. Sudara said, to, uh, you know, give you some insight into your children's psychosocial implications so that you will, uh, you know, uh, see the relative risk. You know, everything we'll have to talk in terms of relativity, but the relative risk, uh, this is the high time, I would say, you know, the prevalence is very low. And the relative risk of uh, transmission is very low. So this is the best time to sort of, uh, it's not trial and, uh, trial and error. It's been uh, done everywhere, right? Now you can go through WHO guidelines in relation to sending your children to school. My point of view personally, if parents, uh, not all of them, it's your choice, true. But if you don't consider your children's uh, well-being, right? And then you put yourself first, and then, uh, you know, if you don't send them, that is what I feel. So you're missing something, right? Probably, you know, this is the best time to send them and train them gradually. They're do not doing it at once. And uh, see that uh, it is very, very minimal, right? Especially if parents are young, transmitting from the children to parents is very minimal, so negligible, right? Well, suppose you are going on the road, so the relative risk of meeting with an accident is there. But you do you do trouble, right? So something like this. Don't worry. I mean, if the what you call the relative uh, the the outbreak, we call so-called second wave is there. Definitely, there will be some measures. I mean, they will temporarily close it. Uh, we say circuit breaker, right? Depending on the community level of transmission, there's a way of doing things. So as it is, this is the best time to send the children. Please do parents understand? uh the psychosocial implications and their needs their basic needs like their social needs their physical needs so keeping that in my uh, in your mind please make a proper decision right my humble request is uh, try your level best to send them and have some faith uh the system is in place so everything is in place so uh, they have done several studies with regard to sending children to school and uh, it is very clear, it is not trial and error. They have done trial and errors many times. So there are conclusive uh, uh, evidence to say sending children is not that dangerous that a situation like this. So uh, this is my opinion about it. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, dear teachers, uh, dear parents, as well as all the stakeholders, thank you so much for attending today's session. And we are going to wrap up and uh, we hopefully will be seeing you very active in the school and uh, once again uh, i i like to thank uh, everyone uh, for their immense support uh, in getting this thing uh, a successful uh, school starting process thank you very much and have a good night